I'm Lex and welcome to my garden here at Sandals and Steel Toes. Growing in Northeast Ohio, Zone 6A. Today we're working on a couple different projects. First I'm going to be moving some of my low tunnels that Carmen built for me in the springtime that we use for our early spring crops and brassicas. And I'm going to be moving those and getting them over our peppers for some season extension to help them just be able to ripen up the last of the fruits before uh, it starts to get too cold once the frost comes. And the second thing we're going to be doing is building a hoop house. I'm calling it a hoop house, but it's not exactly created to be a hoop house so it's kind of a you got this structure uh, used from a couple nearby one of those things that you can use for like outdoor storage and you might have seen something where it's like a canvas over top or so I'm gonna be repurposing that for a greenhouse and over winter our chickens are gonna be living inside of it and over a uh, winter shelter Anyways, you'll see there's lots of stuff we're going to be doing and I'm excited to share it with you today. What I want to do is we'll move these and I want to put them um, covering the peppers because they can live for a while longer and the chickens won't bother them if that's over it. So I'll move those first. I'm going to take this down right here, these tomatoes, because um, they're done. And I was thinking we could put it lengthwise from here to here. What do you think? So the plan is Carmen is going to build the hoop house here in this area that's cleaned and then I'm going to move it up here a little bit where it's a little bit drier. This area here gets kind of squishy in the fall and winter and spring. It's more wet there so I'm just worried about having the chickens um, in a wet area with their house but once we get this put up we will move their house over here to be inside this and that will keep them protected through the winter. And then while Carmen is working on that, um, I'm going to be adjusting my little low tunnels that he made for me um, and it's got frost fabric over top and I'm going to try and get these little low tunnels um, over my pepper plants. And my idea is I'm going to try and extend the season of my peppers a little bit. Um, it's only October 2nd. I've got probably about a week or two before our first frost. Um, but I am going to let the chickens in the garden once I get this area covered. And then they're going to have free range to do whatever they want. And I would like to try and save my peppers for a little bit. So that's going to protect the peppers from the weather and also the wrath of my chickens. And... So I have to try and tuck what I can under these. Now, not all of my pepper plants are gonna fit. There's a bunch all along the edge that I don't think are gonna fit and I don't really feel like rerooting them is the best decision because they'll probably just not make it in that case. Um, so I'll leave those out and those will be free game, but uh, everything else is gonna be under there and we'll try to protect it. Um, but man, it's fall already 
but uh, I'm excited to bring my chickens in here because the garden is a mess. There are, I'm sure, lots of little buggies hiding under things. Um, I had a lot of pest pressure this year, so keeping my chickens in the garden over winter is gonna be um, an experiment for me, but I've seen from a lot of different people um, on YouTube and reading blogs. Um, it's just a great permaculture practice to let your animals do the work for you wherever you, wherever you can. So me letting the chickens have free range of my garden over winter, I'm not going to be using it. Um, so I'll let them use it. They'll fertilize it. They'll eat the bugs, hopefully till up some areas, scratch through areas, and uh, hopefully we'll have a better gardening season next year because of it. And so while I'm doing this, Carmen's back there uh, putting together our chicken shelter hoop house, uh, which next year I would like to use as a greenhouse. We got it used. We have the plastic for a greenhouse, so that's what we're using. We don't have instructions on how to put it together. We help take it down, so we have pictures of what it looked like when we went to pick it up, but that was four months ago, and don't really remember exactly how to put it together, so he's gonna have to figure that out and remember how to put it together, so it's gonna take some time. Stand next to it. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Oh, it's hotter. Hotter than the ground. I don't think that's gonna work. I'm gonna try. Oh. Oops. Why don't you give the head to the chickens? Let me cut it off. They'll like it. It's stuck over there. Oh, it's in the ground. Get off the brick. No, it's the roots, Lucas. That's all the roots from this big old sunflower. This is a big sunflower, Mom. This is why I usually just cut it because they're too, they take up too much ground with it. Yeah, you just need to cut it at the bottom. You're gonna need the ax to cut it. Okay, I'll grab the ax, okay? okay? all right. But first, let's take a look at our lovely little October tomatoes. So I've been watching them. A lot of these are been ripening for a couple weeks. I'll pick these today. So I wanna rip down the tomato plants. I'm about done with them. But I've been waiting for the last of them to ripen. And we haven't had a frost yet, so it's been okay to do that, but I mean, there's still quite a few on here that need more time, but we'll just let them ripen in inside and that'll be all right. But yeah, these are the indigo apples and oops, even now they're like just doing so well. They've been growing all season. They were like one of the first ones to ripen, one of the last to survive. <laughs> So I am really pleased with these ones. And they taste so good. String tying method for the tomatoes worked out pretty good. Now, to be honest, I didn't keep up on it as much as I should have just because it was hard for me to keep up with the garden a lot this year. But overall, I mean, it did its job. The tomatoes were tied up and as I could, I wrapped them up more. Some of them did grow up over the top and hang on the side but it is fine they worked out good I'll do this again next year it was easy easy to set up it'll be easy to take down so I was pleased with it you cutting it careful Did you get it? Mommy. Nice. 
Let me show you what I'm going to do. Yeah, cut it, cut it in half. Or cut the head top off. Cut off its head! There you go. Now you have a new sword. Yeah. All right, be careful with that axe. Now make sure you put it away so you don't fall on it or someone get hurt, okay? Hold on. Did you hear what I said? Yeah, I heard. Okay. okay. All right, now put that put it put that over with the other tools or put it back in the barn, okay? I'll put it the other tools. All right, well, it actually worked better than I thought. I was able to get pretty much all the peppers on this section tucked in. Now some of them <laughs> I did have to like really finagle in there. Um, yeah, like this one here. The stem actually starts like right here, so I just bent it in. And yeah, we'll just see how they do. Oh, I lost one. Okay. I don't have like super high expectations that this is gonna make my pepper harvest extended that much longer, um, but we'll see. Actually, I should have done this probably a couple weeks ago because we have been getting cold nights, but the lowest has been so far at night has been 48, so not freezing. But I've already noticed that there's a lot of just like yellowing on the pepper plants, on the leaves. Hey, why not try it out and see how this goes? I'm gonna keep working on that one and get everything tucked in. Okay, well, I managed actually to get all the peppers in this space inside the frame here. There's a couple right on the edge that I pulled out, but they were really tiny and weren't gonna make it anyways. Uh, so they're in here snugly, so when I close the lid, I'll just have to make sure everything's pushed in. But everything fit, so I've got really nice habanada peppers here that have been doing good and still have a lot of unripe fruit on it, so they'll get to ripen, hopefully. And I've got some, like, natapenos over there and here. Now... The pepper plants here, I've got banana peppers right along the edge. I don't have uh, a way to really cover these other than just putting normal frost fabric over top. So maybe I'll do that because these plants look really nice. But I did have to chop out a lot of marigolds. They just, the marigolds just overtake everything. They're super pretty, but they really do overtake everything. But yeah, I am pretty happy with how those are working out. So now I'm gonna work on trying to clear this area out a little bit because this is gonna go here. And there's lots of stuff in the way. So I wanna try and get that cleaned out for Carmen. So I'm gonna clean out the rest of the tomato plants today too, I think, because they're done. We're not gonna get much else off of them. Our October garden. It's not gonna look like this much longer, especially when I let the chickens loose. I imagine they're gonna devour a lot. Definitely steady right now. So steady. I am very excited about how big this is. Oh! 
Oh! Hey! Why are you yelling? I see! Got it up. Chickens are gonna live under here. I see! Well, their house is gonna be under here I through the winter. Come here, Come here I see! But they're gonna have free range of the entire garden. So, now we're gonna get the plastic and put the plastic on. And I don't know if we're gonna move their coop today or not, but all of this weeds and flowers and all that stuff that's in there, I'm not gonna worry about taking it out. I'm gonna let the chickens do their job and take care of that. That's the whole reason why we're doing this, to make it easier on me so I don't have to clean up the garden. <laughs> We're attaching the plastic with these clips. Okay, so we have our hoop house, greenhouse structure up. It was easier than we thought, what Carmen thought, because he did it. Um, so we have this piece of plastic. Now this is an uh, eight foot wide by 15 foot long structure. And we have the plastic on with these clips. As you can see now they came off of Amazon and the people we purchased all of this from they bought them they bought the plastic they bought the clips so we actually need some more clips to just secure it better so we're gonna look for those on Amazon and I'll put the link in the description if we can find them and next what we're gonna think about over the week is how we're going to do the sides um, we want to have one side at least where it can open up so when I'm growing in it next year I can open up a you know a side and get some ventilation through here because it'd be really hot and on this side we're gonna build a frame and a door and be able to get in and out of it while we're not done today a lot did get done and I'm pretty excited how it looks so far and that we were able to get this will definitely take some getting used to seen this big plastic thing in my garden and I think we'll probably have to square it up a little bit very cool all this different season extension we're doing and we've got the greenhouse over here which is gonna be for seed starting I have all my like fall and winter crops growing in there because I didn't want to plant anything in here with our chickens and when you live in a climate where the winters do get pretty cold um, you definitely don't have to grow anything if you don't want to um, but I like to grow our own food and so having all of this stuff that we can use for season extension is pretty cool and pretty important to me so I'm glad that we are getting all of this put in place and really be able to start utilizing all of that through this winter and next season. So that's all for today. I am gonna spend some more time out here and just keep getting the garden cleaned up and watch my puppy do zoomies through the yard and listen to my roosters crow. <laughs> Can't believe I have rooster and chickens. A year ago I did not have any of that. So it's pretty cool what you can accomplish in a pretty short amount of time. Thanks for watching this video. Have a wonderful day and please do something you love. Talk to you next time. Bye.